This is the Into the Paddock podcast. At the same time that Will Power was crossing line to finish the race, however, pandemonium had broken out further back in what was a really scary incident on the final lap of the race. Um, For the final two laps, Alexander Rossi's McLaren had been slowing. We don't really know why just yet. Some have been saying he was running out of fuel. Some have been saying he was having some kind of problem. We don't know. He slowed a lot off of turn two on the final corner. He was up high. Uh, Stingray Rob was gaining on him very, very quickly. I don't know whether, you know, I don't want to be too hard on Stingray. We usually are. But in this situation, I, I haven't seen an onboard from Stingray to know just how much of a chance he had to avoid it. Rossi was on the racing line at the point of contact, but equally, if you have a slow car weaving all over the racetrack to try and stay out of the way, they're not being predictable. It could cause a crash either way. It was just a horrible set of circumstances, but what that meant was Stingray drove over the back of Rossi's car, got serious air, um, and came back down, uh, barrel rolling over the racetrack. Uh, You had several cars behind spinning uh, to try and avoid them. Uh, Ed Carpenter, Alexander Rossi, and Kyle Kirkwood all spun, went into the inside wall. You then had Kyle Kirkwood's car slam back back into Rossi and Carpenter's cars. Carpenter's car would then be lifted up and would land on top of Kirkwood's car with the wheel actually hitting the air hose on top of Kirkwood's helmet, uh, which was really, really scary to see. Um, and mercifully everyone was okay first and foremost uh, Stingray was extricated from his car and was taken to hospital on a backboard initially but he was later discharged and, and was, was uh, declared to not have any serious injuries that's the main thing at least he is okay um, but once again thank you Aero Screen more than anything yeah absolutely it, it's, it's really scary instance to, to see a car fly up in the air multiple cars fly up in the air uh it's just really really encouraging to see that no one was was actually harmed or, or injured from from the such a spectacular wreck so it's it's really just really thankful that nothing bad happened to anybody precautionary checks for sure um for stingray rob but you know it, it's it's yeah, it's very scary. So just glad everyone's okay. Kyle Corker, like you said, the car coming down on top of him. Thank you, Aero Screen and IndyCar for taking up that program after Formula One rejected that uh, initial proposal from Red Bull Technology. So good on them to to keep drivers safe. Um, you know, especially IndyCar's history of, of driver injuries with you know the the spring that unfortunately took away Justin Wilson. Um, you know, various incidents like that. You know, we've seen tires hit these these aero screens before as well, and now having whole cars land on top. You know, it, it's really, really, it's just a godsend to be completely honest, because we've seen horrible wrecks in the past, and I look back at them now with open wheel cars without aero screens. I'm just like, wow, how did they survive without this piece of safety equipment? So it's just really, really great to see. While I'm I'm glad everyone is okay. Right. I, I, I do have con- some concerns that I'd noticed after this crash. Right. So and, and I've been thinking about it with the Halo, uh, and both with the, with, with uh, uh, Formula One and IndyCar, both iterations of it. What happens if your exit hole is blocked by a tire? Does the Halo come off to allow you to to, you know, move in a different direction? Right, like, like, what, what happens with extrication when you don't have access to the hole in the top of an Indy car, i.e., there's a tire, or the car is upside down? You know, if if there's a tire on top of it and there's a fire going on, are you gonna have time to get a truck over there to lift the car that's on top of that car up to get that driver out? You know, I mean, again, these might. These might be just completely ignorant on on how the Halo system works because I'm I'm surely they've thought of this. Well, it's a concern that's that's come about throughout this period where we've had like cockpit protection, uh, where you know we've seen with Kyle Kirkwood last year uh, when he went went upside down at Indianapolis. They ha- obviously he really wanted to get out of the car as quickly as possible, but they had to wait to put him back up on the right way to then have him get out of the car. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Stingray here. Same thing with Kirkwood. 
here as well. You know, they had to wait until they got in Carpenter's car, at least moved a little bit so we could get out of the car. And, you know, in those situations, you know, we know the AMR safety team are really, really quick. Um, yeah. They can be there very, very quickly and start working to clear that area. But what if there's a fire? Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, know, I know that the FIA, when it came to introducing the halo, they decided their solution was to just uh, increase the amount of time it takes for a driver to have to get out in the mandatory jump out test. You can't tell the fire to burn slower. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it is a concern, but it's something that you've got to... It, there's always going to be an inherent risk with motorsport. Right. Um, and mercifully, in this day and age of, of Formula One and IndyCar, fires are less common than incidents where stuff could enter the perimeter surrounding a driver in the cockpit. Absolutely. I'm sure there's a process for, you know, if a driver was unconscious, how they go about extricating them in the event that the halo or, or the aero screen is blocked by something in this situation. I'm sure they've got it down, but it is it is a worrying circumstance for a driver to end up in. Yeah. And, but it's, and- it's compromise, isn't it? Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we've seen it way more often that this thing has saved somebody. I've seen way more tire marks and, and, and vinyl from other cars being rubbed off on, you know, other halos than I have seen guys get stuck, you know, after, after a wreck. I mean, Romain Grosjean's was, is the most high-profile situation where a, a halo could have potentially impacted their ability to survive an accident. But at the same time, had the halo not been there, he wouldn't have survived the initial impact. The impact. Let yeah, alone he would have been flames. decapitated. So it, it, it's um, difficult. There's, there's, like you said, motorsport is inherently dangerous. These guys know the risk. I'm, and again, all these concerns that we have, these aren't, I don't, if they, of course these aren't new. Right, I mean, ever since Grosjean's crash, and then and then now this one. But again, we've seen it happen that it's protected the driver way more than it's harmed, and so it's just it's going to be really, uh, uh, I think, impactful when it does prevent uh, extrication, or when when it the, the the one time it does cause a problem, right? Because let's let's face it, a a, a one one bad thing can undo a thousand good things right and and that's just that's good but that's going to be have to that's going to have to be a hill we we get over when when we reach it right yeah i i think the plus is definitely always the minuses especially with this arrow screen um like what you're saying like with ed carpenter's car on top of kirkwood i mean if the halo wasn't there in general all of the weight of ed carpenter's car is on kyle kirkwood's head so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, in, but then at the same time, I understand what you're saying with extrication. I know in other categories, you know, where you have cars with more closed cockpits and for extrication purposes and emergencies, they do have explosive bolts. I don't know if IndyCar has that implemented with the aero screen, but they have some type of quick disconnect for that structure that safety crews could be able to, to use to try to get the driver out faster um, in obviously emergency and dire situations. You know, but like we said, like, IndyCar has AMR safety, who's legitimately the best in the business as far as getting to the cars quickly to take care of any fires or, you know, medical emergencies that the drivers might have. So while I agree the the air screen could be a hindrance, I think just having the safety personnel, personnel there almost immediately kind of lessens that immediacy to, to an extent. Race cars are going to find weird yes. places to be. Right. I mean, we saw it at Sebring with uh, uh, was it Pippo Durrani? Yep. Uh, upside down in the tires. Fortunately, there wasn't like a problem with the hybrid system or, you know, there wasn't a fire or something like that. Uh, and so my I don't I don't know. It's like if a car is stuck upside down, um, do, should there be an access panel on the bottom to like access the driver upside? I, you know, I mean, that's. Let's not do that, right? I can only imagine that failing as you're going down the racetrack and then the whole driver thing. Just <laughs> Suddenly your car turns into a Flintstones car. Like, what the right. fuck? I'm sure smarter people than us have thought about the different pluses and minuses for these safety systems. I think what'll be interesting to see is what IndyCar does with this when they eventually introduce a new car, because it's important to remember that the, the DW12 chassis, which evolved into the IR18 chassis, 
was not designed for an aero screen. It was not designed for a hybrid. It, it's a very old car that has been adapted for these things that they didn't foresee when they designed it. So it'll be interesting to see how, you know, we're hearing rumors about a new car in 28, 27, far too late, but whatever. It'll be interesting to see because when, when you design a new car with these concepts in mind, you're able to build in a lot more suitability for them and it'll be interesting to see yeah. if they make some changes to how the aero screen is integrated which might help potentially in these rare situations where it might be more of a hindrance than a help but nevertheless uh, you yeah. know as, as we said earlier it, it's better to have this than to not because the situations you, you know it almost feels like since we introduced cockpit protection incidents which would have been fatal involving stuff getting into the cockpit have gone up it, I, I, it feels, I don't know whether it's just because we're noticing it more now because there's an aero screen or a halo but it feels like we've had so many more instances of potentially life threatening crashes a couple years ago yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's getting wild um, I do have to say though now that you mentioned it about the chassis and all that hats off to IndyCar and the engineers over at Dallara for making all of this happen uh, I yeah. I didn't realize it had been that long since IndyCar had a new car. Yeah, yeah, well, well the, yeah, the DW12 had many iterations. That was introduced in 2012. It obviously developed throughout 2011 by drivers such as Dan Weldon, who would have benefited a lot had he been able to race that chassis uh, in 2011. Um, and then it was obviously changed, different aero kits, stuff like that. The IR18 version came along in 2018, hence the name. It, it's it's a really you know in one sense if it ain't broke don't fix it but indycar could do with a new chassis at some point soon you know there, there's definitely some technological advancements they could benefit from this is the into the paddock podcast <laughs>